Hello. In this video, I provide a demonstration of how to carry out a basic Poisson regression analysis in Stata. A link for the data that is used, as well as this PowerPoint and a text file that contains the commands used in the video, will be made available for download underneath the video description. So if you find the video and materials useful, please take time to like the video and share it with others, and also please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. So let's begin with the following scenario. You are studying predictors of the number of work days during a 90 day period where employees can be absent from work for whatever reason. You obtain data from a sample of 50 employees. By the way, this is pretty low for Poisson regression. On the number of days, absent employee salary, a measure of gender identification, an indicator of whether or not an employee is in a managerial position, and self-report measures of employee satisfaction and stress. So we're basically going to be uh, predicting the count of absences as a function of salary, gender identification, managerial position, and employee satisfaction and stress. Uh, note that gender identification is a binary variable uh, dummy coded as zero for male uh, identification, one for female identification, and the managerial posi position variable is a binary variable as well, coded zero for not a manager, one for a manager. The remaining variables are being treated as uh, continuous. So here we have just a, a general outline of the basic command structure for running the Poisson regression. We begin by typing in Poisson into the command line, followed by the name of the dependent variable, and then followed by each of the independent variables that we just referenced. So let's do this in real time. I'm going to open up Stata. And at the very bottom of the uh, screen here, it's probably going to be a little bit difficult to see, but you see a command line, so we're going to type in the command right here. So uh, what I thought I would do is, rather than typing everything and taking a long time to do that, I've actually created a, a text file um, that has the commands in it. So you'll see right here I've opened up a text file, and I'm just going to copy and paste that these commands into the uh, line. So this first uh, part of the text file is basically the Poisson regression and I'm just going to copy this and paste it in. Remember that we start off with the Poisson command followed by the name of the dependent variable followed by the names of the independent variable. So I'm going to uh, basically paste this into the command line and run it. And so now you can see that we have run the basic uh, Poisson uh, regression model and we have the uh, likelihood ratio chi-square test that's given right here to uh, test whether our model containing the predictors uh, represents a significant improvement in fit over the null model. We have essentially uh, McFadden pseudo R square right here. We have our regression coefficients, their standard errors and Z values and P values that are given as well as a 95% confidence interval for each of these. And uh, I go into a lot more detail on the actual interpretation in the PowerPoint so be sure to check that out. Now let's say that in, instead of just having the standard regression coefficients, let's say that I want the incidence rate ratios. Well, I can also uh, paste this in uh, again into the command line and instead of just leaving uh, the end of it as uh, the last variable in my, uh, uh, for my independent variables, I can type in a comma and then IRR. So the comma IRR is going to get me incidence rate ratios. So next I'll hit enter and you'll notice that I should have made that uh, in lowercase instead of uppercase. So you'll see right here I'm just kind of redoing it with comma and then lowercase IRR, hit enter, and there's our results. So now within the output you can see that we have a column of incidence rate ratios associated with our uh, predictor variables. So just to recap the basic structure of the Poisson regression uh, commands you give the uh, Poisson command followed by the name of the dependent variable followed by each of the independent variables and then if you want uh, to obtain the incident rates incidence rate ratio then basically what you'll do is you'll add in a remaining comma and then a lowercase IRR and that will get you that. Now typically you'll want to follow up with additional post estimation commands so what we're going to do is use the ESTAT GOF um, in order to obtain essentially the deviance goodness of fit and the Pearson uh, goodness of fit. And both of these are essentially chi-square tests. 
and when interpreting these uh, basically non-significance is an indicator of a good fitting model so the previous uh, likelihood ratio uh, chi-square test I was referring to earlier this is it right here if this is significant that's an indicator of good of good fit because we're just testing our full model against a null model and we're determining that whether or not it's a significant improvement in fit over the null um, in the latter case we have the deviance chi-square test and Pearson uh, goodness chi-square goodness of fit test and non-significance in these cases are indicative of a good model fit and another post estimation command that you can uh, where you can obtain additional information is ESTAT followed by IC and that will get you the Akaiki's information criterion and Bayesian information criterion and these indices are also uh, useful for uh, making model comparisons so going back to my text file, you can see right here I've just included uh, those commands, estat, gof, for goodness of fit, estat, ic, right here. So let's just do both of those. So I'm going to type in, uh, in the command line, I'm just going to type in estat, gof, and hit enter. And so now you can see that we get the deviance uh, goodness of fit test and Pearson goodness of fit test. So there you go. And then we'll add in estat, ic, to obtain the Akaiki's information criterion and Bayesian information criterion. Now going back to our uh, regression results, um, basically the Z test that you see in the regression uh, output in this column right here and, and there's our uh, probability values right here, so our p-values, these are from a wall test of the regression coefficients and one of the downsides of the wall test is that it can be overly conservative when it comes to testing the regression coefficient for statistical significance. So another option might be to uh, look at carrying out likelihood uh, ratio chi-square tests associated with each of the individual predictors. To do this uh, takes a little bit more work than uh, what we've already uh, been doing. First off, what you'll have to do is run the original model and store the results. So again, I'm just going to run the model with, uh, there's my DV, IVs right here that follow. follow that, following that, we are going to store the estimates. So we're going to use the command estimates store. And the full, uh, the term right here is just a name given to the information that's basically been stored from the full model. So, um, so I'm just typing in again, estimates, store, and full. And then step two is basically reanalyzing the model uh, over and over again by removing one of the predictors. So in each subsequent model, you remove a predictor and run the model. And then following that, you will use the LR test command and then the name that we gave right up here, which we'll just use full right there. So you'll do that for each individual predictor in the model. So we'll go ahead, um, this is basically that uh, initial regression, but I'll just go ahead and copy it, paste it in again, just to, as a little bit of a refresher. Then what we'll do is we'll use, we'll type in estimates, store, and then we'll type in full right here. So I'm just going to type in the command line, estimates, store, and then full right here, and then hit enter. So then next we'll type in the reduced model um, and like I said we'll remove one of the um, predictor variables from it and then we'll use we'll carry out the likelihood ratio test. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste the original model in here and I'm going to remove manager as one of the predictors. So I'm going to hit enter right here and so this is the model with manager eliminated. So you'll see that previously um, the degrees of freedom from our overall likelihood ratio test was five for this particular model it is four and so what we're going to do is test the differences between those two uh, likelihood ratio um, um, values so we're just going to type in LR test and then full right here and then hit enter and so now you've got the likelihood ratio test testing the full model versus the reduced model and so if the test is statistically significant, that would mean that our fit actually reduced significantly as a result of deleting the uh, individual predictor. If it's not significant, as is the case right here, then what that would tell us is that we don't lose a significant amount of information by removing the uh, predictor variable. So we would treat that predictor as being non-significant. Non 
So that pretty well covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, the last page of the PowerPoint contains a number of uh, re references and resources I used in putting the PowerPoint and the video together, so be sure to check it out. And uh, again, if you like the video and the materials useful, please take time to like the video and share it with others. And I appreciate you watching.